Hey, this is Taylor from Nuts and Bolts Speed Train, and so far we've made it this far with our pie chart using the rule of twos and going donut. And just for quick clarification, if you select your chart, chart tools, design tab, change chart type, the donut option is just the default setting here in the pie chart, or if you have an earlier version of PowerPoint, it might be there on the left. And although the slide looks better aesthetically, kind of like an infographic, we're still missing what I believe the secret ingredient is. So even after we've done some work like this, we still have to ask ourselves, what's the point of that slide? Why did we pull this information together in the first place, right? Because the last thing you want to hear from your audience when you present it is a PowerPoint. And the secret ingredient that basically forces you to get to a point is context. How your number, statistic, ratio, or whatever else it is you're working with relates to something else. And the most important thing to remember about context from a presenting perspective is that the magic is in the middle. And let me quickly try to explain this using shape. So if this blue rectangle is my data point, my ratio, my factor, whatever, and this purple diamond is what I'm using for context, all of the space in between the two objects is the can of worms you want to open and resolve. That's your point. So what happened so that the rectangle became a diamond? What do you recommend doing about our blue rectangle compared to their purple diamond over there and why? Is it good to be purple? Is it good to be blue? Is our color good but you recommend changing our direction so there were also a diamond, right? And it could be a bunch of different things but that's what I mean by the magic is in the middle. And there's three types of context you can use when you're shaking out your point like this. You have the past, the future, and the comparison. And just watch how context drags your point out as you add it to your slide. So taking our slide and just adding a bit of context, let's add a point from the past. So we were at 50%, so this is the past, and we got to 70% here on the right. Well, the magic is in the middle. What happened between 2015 and 2016 that got us this 40% growth? So maybe our point is that our blogging campaign increased our Organic traffic by 40% and we're now making recommendations on whether to continue it, whether to stop it, whether we need to do something different, etc. And I would even do something more here, but let's first add another data point before we do that. So here's another data point. So I have the past there on the left and I have the future there on the right. So it looks like from this case that we're growing 50% to 70%, but maybe again, the magic in the middle, maybe you're recommending that we need to do something even more drastic here to get that last 5% of our corporate goal, which could easily break down into a couple sets of slides. So maybe your first slide is we've gone from 50 to 70% with our blogging campaign, which is a 40% growth. But to get that last 7%, we're going to have to do something radically different. And before I tell you what I would do to make this even better and why I would probably ditch the pie charts, let's add another data point. So let's say that this is my slide and I've added three more data points. And what I'm trying to show here is that over time, our blogging traffic has actually been fairly stagnant until we get to 2015 and 2016. So we did something here, the magic is in the middle, to make our growth go up. But using pie charts or donuts like this, it kind of looks like an infographic, but look how much more effective it is, if I flip to the next slide, when it's a column chart. This is much more effective to show stagnation, and then when we have our big jump here, if I just flip to the next slide, you can then highlight your point visually, and you can check out one of our earlier videos to see some ideas for how to do that. If I again add a different set of data so if I go to the next slide this time I'm trying to show that we were actually losing our traffic until this 2016 number and again notice how these donut charts don't really give you a context for what's happening whereas if I again go to a column chart you can clearly see and I've used the formatting that we talk about in a bunch of our trainings that that trend is going down and again highlighting my point visually I can then highlight this section and start to talk about this um, which is obviously going to be the point of my slide. And if I was presenting this slide live, I wouldn't add any more to the graphic and I might even either take away the title up top or somehow blend that into the graphic so that the majority of the focus is here on my chart and that grayed out 40% year on year growth. Now, the last type of context, the comparison, is a bit special. Is this where you can get a little bit more creative with your data visualizations? And I'm not saying that this always works or that you want to overdo this, but I recently saw a great example, so I thought I'd stick it here for inspiration for this video. So here on the last slide, let's say that we're in the cruise liner industry, so our allure of the seas, and maybe you've seen this floating around the internet, is basically five times the size of the Titanic. So maybe we're trying to get investment, and we're just trying to show that we have five times the ship in a single ship. And although here with the rule of twos and going donut, this makes a pretty good data visualization. If you can get a bit creative and do something like this, literally showing how big the Titanic is here, and notice that the Titanic, the top of the Titanic, other than the smokestack, doesn't even come up to the bow line here, the allure of the sees this is a much better data visualization it will help you prove your point i remember reading a book about walmart and instead of relating how many millions of gallons or maybe it was hundreds of millions of gallons of orange juice they sold in a single year which no one could really grasp just how much oj that 
that was, they instead broke it down into however many thousands or whatever swimming pools that actually was. And you can check out our blog post on storytelling for more tips on how to do just that. So as a quick recap here of episode two of what's the point of that slide, context is the secret ingredient to getting to the point of your pie charts, the past, the future, or the comparison. And if you get stuck, remember that the magic is in the middle. That's typically what's important and should be the point of your slide. So focus on highlighting that. If you found this short video helpful, please let me know in the comment section below or like this video here on YouTube. This is still an experimental YouTube series. I'm only committing to six episodes at this point. So if this was helpful to you or you'd like to see more, please let me know. As always, you can check out the links in the description box for the slides and other killer PowerPoint resources. This is Taylor from Nuts and Bolts Speed Training and I'll see you at happy hour.